Hey guys, so to obtain this look, I'm going to start with my eyebrows and I use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade. I'm going to use a spoolie first to brush out my brow hairs because they can get a little bit unruly. And then using the brush end with a little bit of pomade, the technique that I like to use is to outline my brows first and then use small brush strokes to build the product into my brows. That way it doesn't start the brow off too dark. You can always Always build up the product. Another thing I like to do is to use the spoolie at the front end of my brows just to make it look a little bit more natural rather than the box brow look. And then I also use the spoolie to brush the product through my eyebrows, just making sure that my hairs are all going in one direction and that the product is blended in properly. Now that my brows are done, we can move on to concealer and using my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, I'm going to put this on my beauty blender and then I'm going to put this underneath my eyes where I have a bit of discoloration and also on the top of my lids. I'm going to use this as my eyeshadow base instead of using a separate product. So this will also get rid of the discoloration on my eyelids and give a one color surface for when I start applying eyeshadow. Now that the concealer is done, we can move on to foundation and I'm going to be using the MAC Face and Body. I chose to use this lighter coverage foundation because we're going to do quite heavy highlighting and contouring so I didn't feel that we needed to use a heavier foundation. And I put this all over my face and then using my beauty blender, I just blend this out. Now that foundation is done, using my Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Contour and Highlight Palette, I'm going to use the um, lightest yellow shade to highlight and I'm going to place start placing this right under my eyes. Just a side note, sometimes the palette can get a little thick so I like to use a bit of oil. I use the Soil Grapeseed Oil to make the palette a little bit more creamy. I just put a drop in the colors that I'm going to use. To continue highlighting my face once I've put it underneath my eyes, I will place it just underneath or just above my jawline and then also in the middle of my forehead and then down the center of my nose. Now that we're done highlighting, we need to bring some definition into our face. So to start contouring, I'm going to use the second darkest color in the palette. And I'm going to take this and outline my forehead going down to the sides of my face and then bringing the color into my cheek area and then along my bottom jawline. The technique I like to use when contouring is when I bring the color around my forehead, I don't like to go too close to my hairline because I will bring a darker contour color up there. And when I'm doing my cheekbones, I will bring the lighter color higher up and then the darker color lower down. So the next step is, as I'm showing you, is taking the darkest color in the, in the palette and then bringing this color closer to my hairline and then bringing it in my cheekbones right underneath where I did the lighter color. And then I will also bring this along the sides of my nose. And this is just to contour my nose to give it a more streamlined shape. Now that we've placed all of our highlight and contour shades on our face, I'm going to take some MAC Fix Plus and spray this on my Beauty Blender and start probably the most time consuming part of this tutorial and that is blending everything out. What I like to do is use the tip end of my Beauty Blender to blend out all of the highlighted areas and then I'll use the bottom end of my Beauty Blender to blend out all of the contour areas. 
the technique you want to use is to really take your time when blending your arms will get sore I really feel like it's a workout <laughs> but um, you really want to blend well you don't want to have streaky dark lines and again streaky light lines so really take your time and blend it out Now that we're done blending, it's time to set everything. And to set my highlight, I'm gonna take my Ben Nye Banana Powder and I'm gonna brush this lightly over all of the areas where we placed the highlight, including where I originally placed my concealer over my eyelids. To set my contour, I'm going to use the darkest shade in the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour and Highlight Powder Palette and I'm going to take this all over the areas where we placed the contour shades. Now moving on to eyeshadow, I used one eyeshadow palette for this entire look and that was the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette and I started with the shade Pukey and I used this as my transition color. And because I have hooded eyes, I brought this color up a little bit higher than my crease. So hooded eyes basically means that when you open up your eyes, the eyeshadow kind of disappears. So I still wanted to be able to see some of the color showing through so I bring this up a little higher than my crease and then I also brought this down under my lash line. Using the color Roxanne I brought this right underneath where I put my crease color so just a little bit below where I used Pukey I will bring Roxanne in and then I also took it um, underneath my lash line. For both of these shades I used fluffy brushes just so that I could blend the colors out properly. The technique with making your eyeshadow look like instead of just multiple shades put together and look like one look is to blend everything out. So don't worry if you have to go back into another shade and then go back into the next shade just make sure that the colors blend together Then taking the color Jax, I put this directly under where I had used Roxanne and also brought this under my lash line. The key with darker shadows is to really start out with as little as possible on your brush and then build it up. That way you are less likely to make any mistakes with a darker shadow that's more visible. I'm going to take the shade in light and use this to highlight right underneath my brows and then also to highlight the inner corners of my eyes. I'm now going to take the shade SBN on a flat shader brush and I'm going to put this all over the lid of my eye. When I first started using this color I wanted it to pop a little bit more so what I did was I took some of the color on my brush and then sprayed a little bit of the MAC Fix Plus to make the color pop a bit more. Mm -hmm. 
This color had a little bit of a bronzy feel to it, but once I placed it on my eyelid and it mixed in with the other colors that I used, it gave it a bit more of a rose gold kind of look to it, and I really, really liked that. Don't be scared when using this color as to how, how high up you go. You can always go back in with the other colors like Roxanne or Jax or Pukey and just blend over it and it will look great. The next step that I did was I took my NYX um, liquid liner in black and then I, I'm really sorry, <laughs> doing my wing liner on camera proved to be really difficult. I'll definitely work on that in the future. But I did take this over my eyelash line and then brought it up um the technique that i use when i do my wings is i start at the the highest point of where i want my wing to to go and then i bring it down towards my eyelash line and then i go back to the highest point and then i draw a triangle to where i want how thick i want my wing to look Then taking my Maybelline Colossal Cardial in black, I put this in my lower waterline and I also took a little brush which I don't know that I showed in this um, clip is I took a little brush and just smudged it out so that it didn't just look like such a solid black line. Next, moving on to highlighter, probably one of my favorite highlighters in my collection is the Becca Jaclyn Hill Champagne Pop. And I take the highlighter and I put it across both of my cheekbones and bring it across, blending it into the side of my face. Another technique I like to use is to bring the highlighter above my eyebrow. I really feel like it, it looks amazing when you're turning your head and it catches the sunlight. And then I also take the highlighter and bring it down across the center of my nose. Next, moving on to mascara, I'm going to use the Maybelline Great Lash in, uh, I think it's black as black or just black. And I'm going to prep my eyelashes for when I put on my false lashes. Don't forget the step because I find when you're using like products like concealer and um, foundation, my eyelashes tend to turn that color. So you really want to prep them. And what I like to do is I'm going to actually put the glue on my eyelashes now, even though I'm not going to put my eyelashes on now I want the glue to get tacky so I'm using the cocoa lash glue and I'm going to put this on my eyelashes and then let them sit so that the glue gets tacky while I do the next step For lipstick, I'm going to be using the MAC and Selena collaboration in the color Dreaming of You. I really love this color. It's kind of vampy, wine stained. It's really gorgeous. Um, because it is a matte lipstick, I did prep my lips first by using a normal lip balm. Anyone will do and then giving that a second and then putting the lipstick on top. I find that that makes it a lot more comfortable when you're using a matte lipstick. While I dance away, the next step was going to be the eyelashes. I I have probably like a ton of favorites, so I can't really pick my favorite eyelashes. But for this look, I'm going to be using the Coco Lashes in Queen Bee. They're very like 
wispy fluttery lashes but also quite dramatic and because we pre-glued them and left them to sit for a while the glue has now become tacky which makes it a lot easier when you're putting on your lashes because they won't move around a lot they will stay in place and a technique I like to use is to use my fingers to pinch my natural lashes with the fake lashes and that just makes them blend in together and also makes the lashes stick properly so you won't have any problems with them loosening throughout the day or anything like that once we're done with our lashes i'm going to take some mac fix plus and i'm going to set my entire face this really helps when you want to stop your makeup from moving around throughout the day and also to blend all of the powders and creams that we've used together i'm just gonna you know brush that dry and here we have the finished look i really hope that you liked it um, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Hopefully I'll be coming out with some new makeup tutorials soon.